Welcome to episode three of this series, Get Dressed for Empire, uh, with me and my character Skywise Fowl. Today we are on to the priestly vestments. In Empire, there aren't necessarily classes for your characters that you're locked into, rather archetypes uh, that can influence the type of character you want to play. Most nations have a leader or a magic user or a trader or a priest or a, a physician type archetype. Um, but they are in no way a means to blinker you into doing one thing. Um, by all means, you can you know you can be a priest and a trader. You can be a, a physic and a mage. You can be all of them. They're not there to keep you on one path. They're just there as sort of uh, keystones or touchstones to base your roleplay on that you can go back to. Uh, Fowl is a preacher, funnily enough, uh, which is one of the orc-related priest archetypes. They focus on the virtues or the virtuous well-being of their congregation, of, of their banner mates, rather than the uh, the sort of ancestor, not ancestor worship, um, but sort of the wisdom of the ancestors that the shaman focus on. Um, I changed my archetype in play, so I've been more than one. You can be more than one. Um, having rolled up as a shaman originally, I didn't really know didn't really know which one I wanted to pick when I started Foul, um, but the, the Skywise are a, a sort of banner of magicians and uh, and preachers now, so I, I figured Shaman would be quite a good one to start with. You can um, you can sort of hear your ancestors a bit more as a Shaman. That's sort of the underlying idea there, um, and they're very much involved in the uh, <laughs> in the ecumenical matters um, in, in the sort of religious side of the Orc Nation, but not necessarily the one we're supposed to be involved in. They're not. They're not involved in virtue, or um, they wouldn't exactly have a congregation, should we say? Um, but I, I changed my archetype, and it changed me. It changed Fal quite considerably um, because it affected my personal resource as well. I used to have a military unit, and now I have a congregation, um, and I wanted to show this change in the clothes that I wear. I wanted to have a depiction of what an orc priest is, um, a tangible sort of visual cue that showed my archetype. Um, and I love the idea of mage armour. I love the idea of a set of clothes that you wear that belong to one particular type of um, character. You know, mage armour is for mages. You can't wear armour as a mage, so you have mage armour instead. Um, so I wanted to create. I guess priest armor. Um, mage armor is three components. Uh, so I thought, well, I better make three things that show that I'm a priest. There's some great examples on the magic item page of the wiki that, that shows what sort of priestly garb you can wear that describes different types of clothing that priests in the empire would wear. And of course, these magic items, if you create them in game, will give you specific buffs. Like there's ones that give you extra fortitude, that allow you to use hero skills without points. Um, you can even perform ceremonies without the use of Liao. But of course as an orc, I can't do any of that anyway. I can't take the priest skills, I can't perform ceremonies, um, and I can't take Liao. So I didn't want to create something that was in the vein of the magic items shown, because I can't wear them. So I figured I would take inspiration from elsewhere. Right, let's put the next layer on. I've just taken my band braces off um, because obviously I don't wear them all the time. So there's not much point in having them on with every layer, and it shows you a little bit of, of the different stuff I've put on. You know, sometimes I have some jewellery on or some armour. Who knows? When you've got options, then that's a good thing. So the actual priestly garb. The first bits I put on is my stole. It's got a nice seven spokes wheel on the back that goes just behind my head and then two horses and some bones. Now this goes either on top of my armour or if I'm not wearing my armour then just on top of my robe um, and it always goes under my jacket so it's never really seen. The bottom bits might be seen underneath my war skirt 
Um, but the back isn't, and the rest of it's not. But this is one of those bits of kit that, when I'm talking about getting dressed into your character and you feeling you like you're becoming your character, this is the bit of kit that I put on and I feel like Val is becoming a priest. Uh, the second bit is my very large seven-pointed star medallion. And I'll speak about this a little bit more in depth when we do the close-up. But that is the second part of my priestly garb. It's nice, nice and heavy. Good for using as a knuckle duster. You can punch some virtue into some people. And the last, and by no means least, is my belt of virtue. My, my seven virtue belt, my belt of the seven virtues. It's, I'm not sure what to call it, but um, oh, look at that. Now, I've never actually worn it on top of this armour before, because again, I don't always wear this armour. Um, in fact, I think I've worn it, I must have done, um, but it shows the difference in your sort of waist size. Now, that that's fine, because I've made this adjustable. Um, usually, when it's on me with just my base layers, then it's sort of exactly the same size as my waist. Um, or I've just put on a bit. Who knows? Let's uh, poke this through. I've not actually put... Usually I put a little um, point on the end of my bits of leather so they can go through holes quickly and easily. And I've not done that on this one. So now I'm going to have to faff around for ages getting it on. Now that, and this of course is where you need uh, a, a, either a Dornish Yo folk or um, I don't know what the equivalent of a squire would be in Empire because we don't have them. But an assistant, I suppose that's uh, what it would be. Either you need an assistant or you just need to be able to wear or put on the kit yourself. So there we have it. That is. Now, do I want to spin and show you the back? Because I don't, it might have knotted itself up. But that's the back. Obviously, I'm going to have a neck wrap on over my t shirt and my face. But that is pretty much us done. Um, I shall speak about it in depth now while you just just look at look at me in all my glory i realize i look at, i look down a lot which for the camera isn't great because then you can just see the top of my head um rather than me holding my head high like i should do when you can look at my wonderful kit i've actually i put this belt on at the wrong layer i'm putting it on now so i can show you the three pieces of clothing all together as the set but actually this belt is one of the last things that goes on and it goes on top of my jacket so that everyone can see it and it's visible to all. So there we go. Now for a close-up. So this is a close-up of my stole. As you can see, it's very reminiscent of those that would be worn in high guard, um, but it's chock full of symbology which is very much on brief for Orcs, seeing as our national hearth magic is worth and symbols. So it's done, I've used a nice heavy wool and a nice chunky leather that I've appliqued on top. This here on the back that goes behind my head is the seven-spoked wheel, probably one of the most popular symbols after the labyrinth um, for the way, for our religion in the Empire. Um, obviously seven virtues, seven spokes on a wheel, sometimes a seven-pointed star, uh, generally anything with seven on it. And then down the bottom, we go all the way to my two imperial horses, 
These ones in particular are based on chess pieces. I just like the sort of flat bottom design and the sort of semi-moon kind of curve on them. I thought they looked really cool. And then at the bottom, we've got our ancestor bones. Now, as per the brief, uh, orcs very much don't like being alone, even in death. Um, orcs generally are buried in mass graves. And the bones of our influential elders um, and our shaman are in particular kept as trinkets and keepsakes. Um, not so much for luck, but more just so we can keep them close, so that in death they are not alone and we are not alone either. And that maybe if they become ancestors, then we have a physical link to that ancestor that we might hear in the bones that they have left behind. So that's why in particular orcs like to keep hold of them. Nothing, you know, it's not particularly barbaric. It's not the bones of our enemies that we've killed. It's not the, it's not the skulls of our enemies. It's simply, I guess, a bit like keeping an urn of ashes. You want to keep them close. And that's what orc... Preachers and shaman in particular do. Now we're on to one of my favourite bits of kit I wear, which is my seven pointed star medallion. This one I, uh, I sculpted and then moulded and cast in pewter, so it's actually proper metal. Yeah. Get a bit of that old uh, ASMR going on. But it's quite chunky. It's uh, it's pretty heavy. And then it's just on a nice brass chainmail chain. It's a, a Byzantine weave for anyone interested. Done in all the rings that we sell. And uh, it was usually on a steel chain um, because I thought it looked better. Um, but brass goes more with our colour scheme. So I've changed it out for brass. And lastly we have my belt of the seven virtues which makes up the last bit of my priestly regalia and it's got a little sculpted panel for each of the virtues and of course I do all of these ones individually. Um, you probably know by now I do quite a lot of sculpting and moulding and casting in metal powders and these are the ones I do in brass. So this belt in particular is sort of based on like a Roman legionnaire's belt. And they had like brass plaque belts with these sort of um, round, just plain plaques. And I thought, oh, what can I do that will be really empire related, um, but nice and in detail? And I thought, oh, I'll do, maybe I'll do a square plaque for each virtue. And they all came out really nicely. And uh, I decided to make it into a belt. It's really heavy because they're quite thick. And they're solid resin, so of course I cold cast them. They're resin and metal powder. So they carry almost the same weight as the real thing. Um, but they're not. And yeah, each virtue has its own little quote. I'm sure in the comments below, if you can guess what they all are in the right order, then you win some points, some beige points, or some brass points. Um... I was about to read out what they are, but I won't because you can work that out for yourself. So yeah, that was my final bit of my priest kit. And yeah, not much to say about it apart from just showing off how nice it is really. They are in a particular order. I'm going to move it instead of moving the camera now. That might be an annoying noise though. They are in a particular order. Uh, based on preference, I suppose, um, with currently my most favourite ones towards the front of myself, and I guess not least favourite, but least applicable behind. Do I have all five? Oh, there are seven. Hmm. So there we have it. Fowls priestly belt. So there we have it, all of Fowl's priestly regalia in one shot. Doesn't it look nice? Uh, thank you for getting to the end of this video. Uh, up next should be the big one. 
It should be Fowl's Coat, my most involved and uh, longest time taken to make piece of costume ever, currently, I believe. So that'll be good. Um, there's lots and lots of hidden detail on that to show off. So it might be quite a long one. And yeah, thank you very much for getting to the end of this one. And I will see you in the next one. Bye. Anyway. Anyway. Thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, share, comment. And follow us on Claire? Instagram. What are you trying to say that I say? Follow us on Instagram. Yeah, do that thing. Bye.